at this time we're gonna open our Bibles in John. Second John 11, chapter 11. John 11. Second John 11. Amen. John 11. It's starting with verse 1. doesn't have a Bible or didn't bring it. It is right here projected. And it says the word. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and the sister Martha. It was the Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant, fragrant oil and whipped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha, and her sister and Lazarus. Amen. Their brothers may be seated now.
Amen. My brothers, this message, it's a message that, for sure, it will bring, it will bring something that will wake us up tonight in the house of Lord. First, because it's a message that brings an example of a miracle operated by Jesus that is a resurrection just a few times we will see this miracle repeating itself in the word of the Lord but this miracle is related to the life of the church and it's for this that Jesus came to the world to give the man a chance chance to win what is the biggest enemy of the man that is death here in the text we're gonna see that Jesus he was doing his ministry and in these three years in this ministry of Jesus, he became really famous. People used to talk about Jesus. People used to comment in the villages, the cities that he went through. They used to talk to their friends. All that he was doing. All the good things that Jesus was doing, all the cures, all the, the teachings, the multiplication of the breads. The sickness that was taken away, and that made Jesus to become a man really well known and admired by many. Even in other nations, the Greeks, when they heard about Jesus, they wanted to bring Jesus to give it to him the citizenship, Greek, the Greek citizenship, so he could escape from death for sure. But Jesus, he had his project. Jesus, he was inside of a time, not a time that we count here. Our time, our watch, our, our dates. The time of Jesus was infinite. His deal, it wasn't with the man. His deal was with God, the Father. It was with the, the work of the Lord. And no one would take him away from what he was focused. No one would take away what he had obtained from the Father. And the enemy in the beginning, right in the beginning, right when he was a child, he tried. The enemy already had a he already had a plan to try to kill him. Even after in the desert, the enemy after tried again. But Jesus he was always faithful to his call. He always shown himself connected to God for complete. And here we're gonna see the story of a man, Lazarus. And this man had two sisters. And the text that we just read, it tells us a moment that Lazarus, he was sick. I can imagine his sisters, how they were really afraid and anxious. Because it's just like us when you when we when we find out that someone that we know is sick, we always start to put our nails in the in the, in the crown and start praying, and we start saying, "Jesus, you're responsible. You're not supposed to do this." And it goes all that for love, and we do that because we love our friends. We love the ones. They're close to us. 
and the sisters here when they when they knew the Lazar was sick they remember Jesus let's call Jesus because Jesus was known was a friend of hers and Jesus used to stay at their house sometimes and the word says a lot of times the word says a lot of times that they were friends and the word says that Jesus used to love Lazaro, Martha and Maria and further forward we're gonna say that we're gonna read that Jesus used to call Lazaro friends look how his friendship was with this three people with this family and now Lazaro got sick and the sisters of Lazaro called Jesus and Jesus 100% focus on his ministry it's not that he forgot or that he did because he wanted to and some days passed and when he came to the city where the sisters was and Lazaro Lazar was already dead for four days he was dead already inside of a how do you say the Bible says the cave the place where they used to put the, the death bodies it's just like we call right now and the people was asking just like when Jesus was coming Jesus if you were here our brother wouldn't have been dead and others said oh when do you think that Jesus could have prevented that because he's Jesus the man that we have seen doing miracle don't you think that if he wanted to he could have cured Lazarus even when he was alive now ask the brothers could him or not yeah he could he could just say sickness get out of Lazarus body that's all he needed but Jesus he was in the time of God and in the time of God it wasn't the moment for that and Lazarus died but the interesting part that I asked the brothers is Lazarus with so many we can say so many things good things positive things in his favor well, let's say oh Jesus has here that he used to love Lazarus Jesus called Lazarus friend all that in favor to Lazarus Jesus used to stay and sleep over Lazarus house look Jesus loved him Jesus was his friend and Jesus sometimes used to stay at his house with so many positive things in favor to Lazarus not even that not even that helped Lazarus not to die do you know why because this was already sad the death of a man it's something that we cannot set a time or set a date you can fight you can use all the resources but no one escapes from that it's an enemy that no one can fight against it. sometimes a child adolescent a youth sometimes just married the brother fight 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 Mar gets married and dies after marriage have a thought about that it's a fight right it's a struggle see they want to marry they want to get married and then they die it happens getting ready and on that day poof you imagine what a struggle but the life is like this there is no way the death the only thing that we have for sure that we have is death 
money you can have today and tomorrow the the Tomorrow your boss fires at you and he says, oh, tomorrow you don't have to come. We have nothing. The only thing the men have is that, and that's it. While the clock is ticking in your favor, you're good. After the last tick, you're done. Because this is, this is part of a man, the Omer. Got that. But is Jesus' fault? No. The, the, the Bible says the salary of sin is death. But if you obey the Lord, you have eternal life. But because of the sin of, the sin of Aden, man got death. The heavy weight of the sins make us die. There is no way that we can escape for that. But Jesus came to change this. Jesus came to show us the opportunity. The man could be Christian, could love Jesus, could have a Bible. The man can know everyone in church. That wouldn't be wouldn't mean that you wouldn't die you can know Psalms 23 24 25 120 120 90 it doesn't matter you can open the Bible you can open the you can open the Bible on Psalms 23 right next to your bed and it won't make a change you're gonna die one day it's not because we sing songs because we know the, the Bible that will make us escape from death there is no way look Larza he's an example of that really good friend of Jesus Jesus used to love him a friend of Jesus but he died could have like gotten away yes Jesus have the power for that but there is no way that a man can escape from that it's our destiny it's our life But Jesus now, he appears and he says to Martha, Martha, I'm the resurrection and the life. Who believes in me, even if it's that, it will live. And all those who live in belief in me will never die. Believe in this. How do you understand that? Jesus was talking about two different deaths. The death, the carnal, the biologic, and the spiritual death. I look to everyone here. Everyone's good. You look to me. I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Looking at me, at the physical aspect, everyone's good. Everyone got here walking. No one is in a wheelchair. Physically, everyone's good. But spiritually, I don't know. I don't know what to say. But Jesus knows us. Jesus knows every single one of us. Jesus knows what we do. Jesus knows what we say. Jesus is the one that goes around everyone's heart. And it's not because you pray. It's not because you're a member of the church Maranatha or any other denomination. That won't give you the right to escape from death. And you don't die. No? The physical death comes. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter if you want or not. You can even like take care of yourself, play sports, be healthy, follow all the medical suggestions, but one day there is no way. Nobody got tired. The, the word says that after 70, it's tiredness. Uh, wow, some people say, I don't know, but some people say the man is going to live uh, 114 years until, oh yeah, 140. 
Now you can. You can stop working at 70, 80, and live into 140. But people, but the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that one day we're gonna to face death, and this is the biggest, our biggest enemy. But Jesus now, he's talking about another life. This life, oh yeah, this life is the one that can be eternal. And now Jesus, he comes. And he says, where's Lazarus? He goes up in the cave when there's a big rock. He asks the people to take the rock. And he calls Lazarus by name. And he says, Lazarus, come out. Jesus calls Lazarus to the meeting. My brothers, the only thing that can give man the eternal life is the call of Jesus. The only thing that can give you the the share of your eternity it is when you listen the voice of the Lord. And it is the hardest moment. And it is the worst moments of our lives. Lazarus was there for four days. People were saying, oh, don't do this. Even his sister the one that wanted to do this the most when Jesus said oh take away this rock she said Jesus he's been there for four days he's he smells good he smells bad he doesn't smell good don't do this the man many times says oh there's no way yeah there's no way don't do this there's no fix Mm, your son, mm, forget it. Mm, your marriage, mm, forget it. Your wife, your husband, mm, forget it. He is lost. It's a lost case. He doesn't smell good anymore. There is no solution. For this situation, there is no solution. But Jesus is the one that can do everything. The call of Jesus is stronger than anything. The call of Jesus, the voice of Jesus is so powerful that when Jesus is talking, he's operating at the same time. And he operates talking. The order doesn't, doesn't change the factor that Jesus want to turn himself to man because the way that Jesus talks to man is individual. And Jesus called Lazarus by the name come out but he said Lazaro now it's just you the other ones can wait Lazaro come out because if he said if he said come out all death all of them will come out because salvation it's individual the man is to be in the time of Lord when you leave your time when you leave your time that you have been leaving the time And then you have been four days already. The body has been there for four days. And then when you come to this moment that you look to the Lord and you recognize the power, then you're going to listen to his voice. Then he's going to call you by your name. You can come, come out. It's the time for your victory. It's a time where all the prayers will be answered. It's a time that Jesus decided to bless your life. That's why, my brothers, we need to always understand this. We are nothing. But Jesus is everything for us. We have nothing else that's going to help us. Even how hard you try and how hard you search, no one's going to stand in his hand for you. But Jesus come, comes towards us. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what time or what situation or what you have been doing or what you've been thinking. When Jesus look at you with his look at his eyes, with the misery, it's your time. 
Sometimes you walked in here tonight. I don't know if you're sick spiritually. I don't know, you have been one day already dead. I don't know if you've been dead for four days. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Tonight, Jesus wants to resurrect. Tonight, Jesus wants to give you the renew of your fellowship. Tonight, you're going to come back all the way when Jesus created man. The creation of man was to be eternal in the presence of the Lord, to have fellowship directly with Him. The resurrection that Jesus talks of here is about this, is to give you the access again to Lord, to the Father. And you only have the right if you accept Jesus. Only if you listen to the voice of Jesus and only if you come out. If you stay there, it's your choice. But tonight, Jesus is calling, come out. You come out. You come out. And you're going to see the power of the Lord. The man wasn't made to stay in the cave. That's why Jesus cried. Here, the word says, Jesus cried. It's not because he loved Lazarus or because he was his friend. No, Jesus cried because he saw the situation of the man. Lazarus represents your situation, my situation. The man wasn't made to stay there in the cave. Jesus said that when Lohan Lazarus went out, unwrap him, unwrap him, let him go. And on 44 said, uh, and he and he had his feet, his feet and body wrapped. So unwrap him and let him go. Do you know why? Because when man comes to the Lord, because when man you start coming to the Lord, he needs to unwrap himself. The wrap talks about everything that's from outside, from the world, from the death. When he came out, everyone recognized him that he was dead. Not because he was smelling good, he's smelling bad, but because he was wrapped up. So he said, unwrap him. So when a man comes to the Lord, he needs to leave outside everything that is from the world. What it make us? What it make us remember all the things from outside, the things that make us, that makes the people to look at you and see, oh, you're dead. But when you come to the Lord, they'll see you different. They'll see you like the light. The life that we have in Jesus, it is the life that He won there in the cross when He took my place, your place, when He took our place in that cross, there He, he actually won the death. Today, the physical death, there is no solution, but the spiritual, there is today. Men could live eternally through the presence of the Lord, through Jesus, but he needs to unwrap himself and leave behind everything that's gonna be on your way. Everything that the people, everything that people might look at you and say, mm, you're Christian? Oh, you're not Christian. Oh, the, the ways that he, they dressed, oh, the way that they talk, Christian, never. That is the, the raps. It's everything that the people outside see. It makes us remember the world. It makes us remember when we were the world. Maybe people that have served the Lord, they come, they leave and come back after with a new opportunity, with sadness. I don't believe, saying, I don't believe in Jesus anymore. I don't believe that Jesus talks. I don't, I don't believe in the spiritual gifts. Yes, Jesus talks. Spiritual, spiritual gifts, it is a reality. 
Jesus talks to the man and he speaks powerfully. You can believe. Your, your son is. When he got sick, it wasn't with the Lord. It was with the man. Because the man wasn't the one that died for you. Who won the death was Jesus. That's why you should unwrap yourself and leave everything behind and come and serve Jesus. Come and accept the call of Jesus. And once again, come and join this walk. Because the call of Jesus is a call of salvation. And you're only going to receive this call if you listen to this call. That's why Jesus talked to us clearly. Come out. And let him come and let him go. That tonight Jesus could talk and speak to our hearts. Because tonight Jesus wants to renew this shirt. That our names is written on the book of life. And that no one is going to be in our way when Jesus comes back to we go up into heaven. And in, in the day of death, we will win our death with only a passage, a passage to the eternal life so we can be the arms of our eternal Lord that Jesus my Bella says, let's hear a song. And at this time, we're going to be talking to the Lord. We're going to ask the Lord a chance, Lord, renew my fellowship, my spiritual life. Renew my happiness of salvation. Renew my desire to serve you.
Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. The instruments are going to be keep singing, and I'm going to invite the brothers to stand up. And you're going to be glorifying the name of the Lord for this opportunity. For the call of Jesus in your life, in your family, for the salvation of the Lord, for the power of Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Lord to Jesus. Amen. Lord to Jesus. Now we're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. We thank you and we glorify our names because we've been talking about the great love of that is Jesus. We have nothing to offer you besides your gratitude. We thank you because we, one day we're going to go to eternity. We thank you for your blood upon us and for everything. In the name of Jesus, amen. My brothers, the word says, Jesus loved in such a way that he sent his son Jesus who died for us what saved us is Jesus God is love but his justice and the justice of Jesus of the Lord it is of what is established it will one day become true and and the judgment of those who are closed who are far, who are far from Jesus is eternal death, but Jesus is love. God is love. That's why He sent Jesus, because He loved me. He loves you, so He could show us the real life, the life who doesn't have a price, the life who never ends, the life who never goes away. That's the life. That's the spiritual life. That's why Jesus came here to show us the way, to bring us and open the way because He's the way. Uh, the Lord says, when we were praying for the service, Jesus shown that He will bring a woman here tonight. That she had served the Lord in the past. She had. Uh, a really good experience with the Lord she believes in God and she knows that the way is God but things happen in her life that brought her away from the Lord but her desire is to come back to the Lord and hallelujah for that hallelujah for that because Jesus knows you Jesus knows who you are Jesus knows what you need but you need to let all the things behind, all the things that you have got in, leave it behind. It doesn't matter what happened, if you got sad, off with someone, leave it behind and, and come out, come out this hole, come out this life. Because Jesus called you to be had, not tail. Jesus called you to be victorious. Jesus called you because he loves you. Jesus called you because he wants your best. Jesus calls you because he wants to save not just you, but all your life your and your family. Listen to the voice of the Lord. It's not the voice of the church, the voice of the man. He's the one who died for you. Amen. And the uh, Lord also shown a family 
and this family needs a renewed and its spiritual life. And I'm not talking about the family, family poor, but Jesus wants to give a blessing to this family. So if you're here representing this family, you need to 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 God into this. We're gonna church. We're gonna pray for you, don't worry. But if the Holy Spirit have talked into your heart, if everything that Jesus gave you, it is almost ending, you need to ask for help. And the help, it's not you come here. No, we we don't have interest on in this. But we're gonna pray for you. And we wanna ask you. We're gonna ask that Jesus could intervene, so Jesus could undo every every do that any have done. So, so the heaven could be the place for this family. So this is the sign of the Lord. We're gonna pray and in the service. And if you need a prayer, we hear the pastor, hear the deacons, the workers, ask for help. The sisters of Lazarus asked for help, and Jesus went. And the hand of, and hand of God did a miracle. Okay, let's close our eyes and pray. Jesus, we we'll ask and we wanna say tonight that we thank you because the service. It was a service programmed uh, schedule in eternity. And we know that your will it is to get new hearts and resurrect new lives. And tonight, for faith, lives are being resurrected in this place. We thank you because you have power. And now we ask that your, that your word, the songs, all the signs, from the spiritual gifts could talk and be and transform lives that your heart might be that your name might be glorified get all our adoration that's how we pray in the name of Jesus Amen and we say that the grace of the eternal grace and the love of the eternal Father the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit could be born upon us now and forever Amen the, the brothers may be seated. We're coming to an ending right now. The church, the the group song, the group you're gonna be singing. And now, if you want a blessing from the Lord, you can stand up your hand. And we're gonna be really quick here, moving ourselves. And we're gonna be going, coming to you, and praying for you. We think. We thank everyone and those who visit us. We say that our service is every Wednesday, Wednesdays, uh, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 8, Saturdays at 7.30, Sunday at 10 a.m. and 7.30 a.m. And we say peace of the Lord to everyone.